What's up, everybody? Ryan Thomas here on the Thomas Take Sports Podcast. Back again, and what a wild four days it has been in this early stage of the NFL offseason, whether it's Aaron Rodgers, whether it's Russell Wilson, whether it's Carson Wentz, and now Khalil Mack. It's been a wild four days for all four of these players. Aaron Rodgers largely expected to leave Green Bay. He's staying put on a four-year deal that makes him the highest-paid quarterback in the National Football League, highest-paid player in the National Football League, no less average annual value salary Aaron Rodgers at the top of the list the first two years of this four-year deal. Aaron Rodgers will be making more money than anybody. Over the four years, he's making more money than anybody. But in the first two years, I've never seen a contract drawn up quite like this one for an older quarterback who is thought to be leaving Green Bay all along only to stay as a member of the Green Bay Packers. Shortly thereafter, in the in the moments in which we learned that Aaron Rodgers was staying in Green Bay, signing long-term with Green Bay, finishing his career ultimately as he will as a Green Bay Packer, we hear the news that Russell Wilson was traded from the Seattle Seahawks to the Denver Broncos. And boy, did Denver give up a pretty penny for Russell Wilson. Two first-round draft choices, two second-round draft choices. One of those first-round draft choices slotted Denver, which was Denver's pick, at ninth overall. They didn't choose to trade the Rams' first-round draft pick that they acquired in the Von Miller trade. They decided to send their own first-round draft choice in the trade for Russell Wilson. Gone are the days of John Elway as the general manager. The new era of the Denver Broncos hierarchy features John Elway as one step below the soon-to-be owner of Denver Broncos. First name, last name, we're not sure who that is quite yet, but... This is a new dawn of a new era, of course, for the Denver Broncos, and it is a dawn of a new era for the Seattle Seahawks. What Russell Wilson did for the Seattle Seahawks franchise, second to none, in the same day in which Russell Wilson is sent back into Denver, longtime Seattle Seahawks defensive captain, all-around great, great linebacker Bobby Wagner, whether it's in coverage, whether it's stuff on the run. Bobby Wagner released, cut, saving Seattle $16.5 million dollars on the salary cap, so a new era in Seattle is starting with Drew Locke shipped to Seattle, Noah Fant shipped to Seattle, as well as Shelby Harris, three mainstays within the Denver Broncos organization. Noah Fant, a top five tight end. Shelby Harris, one of the top uh, rotational defensive linemen in the National Football League. Drew Locke, though, did not fulfill his full potential. I think it's safe to say, but was Drew Locke so bad that Denver felt like they had to trade Two first-round draft choices, two second-round draft choices for that of Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson is entering his year 33, age 33. He'll be 34 this season. How much longer does Russell Wilson have physically to play within the style that he plays with, moving outside the pocket, taking hits after the throw, Russell Wilson getting banged up here and there along the way, Um, I truly feel that this was a a big trade for Denver. It was a trade that Denver felt like they desperately needed. But they gave up a ton. They gave up a lot. And and I know you're only as good as your quarterback in this league, but giving up as many as as four draft choices, three players, you know, Denver won't have a first-round pick uh, these next two years. One of a second-round pick these next two years, I, I think that, That was a very, very risky trade for the Denver Broncos. And then another day later, we we move into the calendar of one day later. The Indianapolis Colts are one and done with Carson Wentz. They move on from Carson Wentz after one somewhat tumultuous season with the Colts, ending with a resounding thud with a loss that put the Colts out of the playoffs. That loss coming against the team that's picking first overall. Once again, back-to-back from last year's draft to this year's draft, that of the Jacksonville Jaguars. And truthfully, 
I feel for Carson Wentz. I, I don't feel he is as bad as people are making him out to be. I, I don't quite know if he's as good as people thought he was his original year. There's obviously been a come down in terms of his talent, in terms of his talent level, and how he has played within his skill set. The skill set obviously needs work. The skill set needs more work than what we thought. And and quite possibly, could Carson Wentz be less than what he was before, due in large part to the fact that Carson Wentz has been an injury-prone quarterback in the National Football League. I think so. I think that has a lot to do with it. Not only will Carson Wentz be playing for his third team in as many years, going from the Eagles two years ago to the Colts last year to now the Washington Commanders, but the Indianapolis Colts, they too will have their fifth different starting quarterback in as many as five years, going from Andrew Luck to Jacoby Brissett, to Philip Rivers, to Carson Wentz, to now who I believe to be either Mitchell Trubisky or Jimmy Garoppolo. Either one of those quarterbacks, I feel, would give the Indianapolis Colts the best advantage moving forward to provide production back into Indianapolis that we haven't seen since Andrew Luck was relatively unscathed in terms of his health, in terms of his physical um, deterioration as he deteriorated physically over the course of his career, due in large part to the fact that he was getting hit early and often uh, throughout his career. So the Colts, be very interested to see who they go after. But flipping the coin here to the Washington Commanders, Carson Wentz, Commander Carson, does make the Washington Commanders better. I, I do like the Taylor Heineke story, but Carson Wentz does have physical skills that most quarterbacks don't have. It's just a matter of a team putting the right pieces around him. The Washington Commanders, they have a lot of great pieces. For my money, two of the most underrated offensive skill position players in the National Football League with Antonio Gibson at running back and Terry McLaurin at wideout. I feel that Carson Wentz could have a really good year. Ron Rivera just has to put his trust, his faith in Carson Wentz to do what he needs to do best. Throw the ball on the run. Throw the ball athletically. Throw the ball accurately. Carson Wentz is a quarterback that does have those attributes. It's just a matter of keeping him protected in the pocket. If Carson Wentz can, for the love of God, not get hit, I think Carson Wentz can be productive in this league again. And last and certainly not least, Khalil Mack. This one really sent shockwaves through my social media feed of Twitter, whether it's at Ryan Thomas Take or at Ryan Thomas Take on Instagram. I did not see this one coming. Chicago moves Khalil Mack and his contract to the L.A. Chargers, putting L.A. in in the running for one of the best front sevens in the NFL, adding a, a dynamic pass rusher like Khalil Mack, Makes that team that much more dangerous. Joey Bosa paired with Cleo Mack. Wow, that could be really fun television. The AFC West. You want to talk about a division that had some, uh, uh, somewhat of a resurgence in terms of energy uh, pushed into it. You could easily say that the AFC West is one of those divisions with Denver getting Russell Wilson. The Kansas City Chiefs are one of the best teams in the NFL, let alone in the AFC especially. The Las Vegas Raiders bringing in Josh McDaniels, and Josh McDaniels bringing in one, two, three, four coaches from that of the New England Patriots. The the Vegas Raiders are something to be be reckoned with. I think they made the playoffs last year under truly unprecedented circumstances. I would have liked to have seen the coach get another shot, Basicchia get another shot, but he didn't. Josh McDaniels comes over. It it provides the, the look of that the Raiders are looking to be respectable, respected, within the National Football League, and rightfully so. This should be a respected franchise always, but once again, this is a franchise that has fallen on hard, hard times, fallen down on hard times uh, over the course of the last few years. Obviously, uh, prior to Al Davis's passing, those last few years were rough. They bring in John Gruden again, and Gruden obviously talked his way out of the NFL. So this is a situation that the AFC West, with the L.A. Chargers, you know, L.A. getting a Super Bowl for the Rams – competitively I think the Chargers have looked at themselves as like the Rams little brother as far as marketing and the and the LA market uh, within the National Football League so the Chargers are looking to become a market in which they can they can really own a portion of that market and I think long term the Chargers are that team that should own the marketplace of Los Angeles uh, where the Rams obviously are built for now the Chargers with Justin Herbert who is one of the best young quarterbacks in this league I feel the Chargers really made a power move by going out and getting Khalil Mack. 
Um, chiming in on that quick take and, and just recapping that news, obviously I wanted to start off the show today by giving you guys that news as far as all things NFL. Aaron Rodgers, we'll go back to just a simple fact that Aaron Rodgers, in my opinion, okay, and in this show, obviously you guys that have followed it for a long time, uh, going back to the to the first six years um, that we're in the show, obviously we're within the sixth year of the show, seventh year of the show, actually, I go back to the simple fact that Aaron Rodgers did something that most players wouldn't even dare to do. Aaron Rodgers went against the grain. Aaron Rodgers went against the bosses. And it's very rare that an employee of a company, you could say, in this case Aaron Rodgers, an employee of the Green Bay Packers, it's very rare that an employee of a, of a team player on a team, can go toe-to-toe with his bosses and not only succeed, but succeed in terms of getting a raise, succeed in terms of getting the highest raise that you could possibly get as an NFL player, as an NFL quarterback. That is exciting for anyone involved uh, that is an Aaron Rodgers fan. Now, I, I am a fan of Aaron Rodgers, the player, I feel like Aaron Rodgers, the person, has been a little bit annoying over the course of the last year and a half, whether it's a stance on COVID or anything like that. I don't really care about that. But Aaron Rodgers has been far more vocal of a player these last few years than he was ever before. And it makes me wonder if that's who or that's who Aaron Rodgers always was, always is, and always will be. And he masked that. He, he somewhat silenced that as he was in the younger years of his career sitting behind Brett Favre and coming into his own uh, as the starting quarterback of Green Bay, but now he's got the bravado. He knows that he's one of the best quarterbacks, not only to ever play the game, but one of the best quarterbacks in the league as it stands, top three easily at the quarterback position. But I look at Rodgers and I say to myself, when you go towards legacy, when you go towards talking points that feature all-time greats, As I just mentioned, Aaron Rodgers is one of the most talented quarterbacks to ever play the game. Okay, one of the most talented that I've ever seen. But when it comes down to the nitty-gritty and what makes a player the greatest of all time and what makes a player special, you'll go back and look at Aaron Rodgers and you'll say, yes, the talent is there. One of the most talented, uh, gifted quarterbacks physically that we've ever seen. But he cared more about the money. He cared more about putting himself in the best financial position possible, whereas guys like Peyton Manning, who took pay cuts, guys like Tom Brady, who didn't see $30 million until he played for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you know, was underpaid largely as the quarterback of the New England Patriots. Those guys weren't willing to do those things. Drew Brees, up until the later years of his career, he wasn't willing to take big money. He was willing to make you know, marketplace money for the quarterback position, but he wasn't going to hinder the team. Whereas this contract, no ifs, ands, or buts about it, hinders the Green Bay Packers. It would be very difficult to move players around, bring new players in, re-sign your own players when you have this contract written up for Aaron Rodgers. As well, you throw into the equation, the, the equation, I should say, that Devontae Adams is more likely than not going to receive the franchise tag from the Green Bay Packers. So this is very interesting in terms of what is, is brought to the table as far as the salary cap situation for the Green Bay Packers with this contract. Matt LaFleur and company, the general manager of the Green Bay Packers, the owner that is... You know, the the fans, essentially the Green Bay Packers, yes, they wanted Rodgers to retire there. They didn't want to see Rodgers, like they did Favre, play in another uni. I I get that. And frankly, as as a diehard fan of Brett Favre growing up, that was tough to see Brett Favre wearing a New York Jets jersey, wearing a Minnesota Vikings jersey. They don't want to see that again with their favorite son. Right? They don't want to see that again with Aaron Rodgers. And I and I get that. But I think this contract is is good for the team in terms of Rodgers being there and he, he's rock steady, he's productive, but Rodgers isn't gonna get any better from here. 
Despite making more money than he's ever made in his NFL career, these next four years, Rodgers won't get better. I'm not going to go out and, on a limb and say that he's going to get worse, but he's certainly not going to get better based on his age, based on wear and tear, and based on the Green Bay Packers' inability within this new contract that Rodgers is receiving, the team is not going to get better. So it's going to force Rodgers to do even more than he already has over the course of his career for Green Bay. And if Green Bay doesn't stick their heads on right, doesn't put their mouthpiece in as far as the war room on draft day and adding skill position talent for Aaron Rodgers to play with, then the Packers are in real trouble. And you could go as far to say that the Packers are going to be much, much worse. Now turning the page to Russell Wilson and concluding the Aaron Rodgers discussion as far as Rodgers with Green Bay and the $200 million and all that stuff, we move on to Russell Wilson. The Russell Wilson situation is, first off, I want to start off the Russell Wilson situation. Before I dive into the trade and, and Russell Wilson going from Seattle to Denver, realistically, I have to say this. Russell Wilson is a great dude, and I truly feel that Russell Wilson wanted to play his entire career in Seattle. If it was his choice, I think he would have. No matter what state the team was in, I don't think Russell Wilson wanted out of Seattle. I think Seattle realized the writing is on the wall for the organization. They're trending downward. They're trending towards a rebuild. And they didn't want Russell Wilson to be a part of it. They wanted to maximize the package in which they would get as a return for the best player on the team in Russell Wilson, an MVP candidate almost every single year based on what he provides to the Seattle Seahawks. But they had to eventually make a move. They made the move. And in the process of making the move, you hear all sorts of rumors as far as where Russell Wilson could go, whether it's Washington, whether it's Denver, whether it's Indy. A lot of rumors floating around as far as where Russell Wilson was going to land. It was just a matter of when and not if he would be traded. For a long time, we wondered if Russell Wilson would be traded. He was. It, 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 once we got past the if, it was only a matter of time once Seattle said, hey, you know, we're shopping everybody, we're looking into every trade, we're not leaving any stone unturned. That let the world know that Russell Wilson was possibly trade bait for the Seattle Seahawks and Pete Carroll. And, you know, I, I think I think this is a tough pill to swallow for football fans because Russell Wilson playing in another uniform is just going to look very odd. Just as I mentioned, as it did for, for Brett Favre, as it did for Peyton, as it did for TB12, as it would for Aaron Rodgers. But this is a business, and, and this is a, a big, big business, and this is the business of winning. And a player like Russell Wilson does not necessarily belong on a rebuilding team. I think entertainment-wise, for the National Football League's sake, it's best if Russell Wilson is on a team that gives him the best chance to make a run at it, that gives him the best chance to play in big games. Is Denver that team? That's the question. How close is Denver, in their own estimation, towards winning a Super Bowl? Now, on paper, the Denver Broncos have a, a pretty solid group offensively. You have Cortland Sutton. You have Jerry Judy. Those guys, Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy, immediately, when Russell Wilson has moved from Seattle to Denver, those guys immediately become fantasy football gold. Those guys, I, I should say they're stock as fantasy football players, goes up tremendously because DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett were consistent producers at the wide receiver position with Russell Wilson throwing them the ball in terms of fantasy and in terms of reality. Typically, fantasy does translate to reality. If a wide receiver is putting up big numbers and you're in a PPR league, he's putting up big numbers for you in your league. So which one will benefit more? I feel like Cortland Sutton is the better, more proven receiver out of the two, but Jerry Judy has been knocking on the door, showing flashes of the skills that he had in college at the pro level. It's just a matter of the flashes being watered down due to the fact that you didn't have the best quarterback throwing him the ball, and it's no offense to Drew Locke. I think Drew Locke still has uh, potential, still has talent. I think more than anything, Drew Locke needed a fresh start, and hearing the news uh, of how 
Drew Locke himself heard the news. That's never good. When a, when a player hears the news of him being traded from within social media, TMZ, whatever, wherever they heard it, it's never good, right? I never, I never enjoy hearing those stories, and I'm sure the players um, feel betrayed and heartbroken to hear, you know, that you were traded from from someone other than the team. So Drew Locke, I, I hope he gets a great fresh start. He deserves it. Um, and I hope he becomes the Seattle Seahawks starting quarterback. I think that'd be a good redemption story for him. Realistically, though, I think Seattle is going through a rebuild. I don't see them being competitive. Um, adding Noah Fant, yeah, I really like Noah Fant. I, I feel like he is one of the top, you know, five to ten tight ends in this league. Um, so that you know, the return for Seattle, pardon me, for Seattle, you can really build off that return um, and make your team better quickly. Uh, in comparison to just holding on to Russell Wilson and hoping for the best. And I think Seattle did the right thing for Russell Wilson as well as themselves um, in the future. Now, Denver, in terms of how competitive they can be, I mentioned earlier in this show how great this AFC West is going to be. This AFC West is going to be such a tough, dynamic talented athletic division uh, in 2022 and Russell Wilson adds a lot of flair to that fact and when I look at who can win that division obviously Kansas City comes to mind but now the Chargers add Cleo Mack defensively Denver eh, they're okay they're not they're, they don't wow anyone anymore so I'd like to think that with this trade of Acquiring Russell Wilson, Denver will either spend some salary cap space once free agency opens or invest some draft picks on the defensive side of the ball because the offense is what it is. You just got a lot better by acquiring Russell Wilson. You went all in on that and acquired a player at the game's most important position, and you paid a pretty penny to do so. The question remains, nine wins or more over under? You know, I'd say over under nine, I'd say even. I wouldn't say under nine. I wouldn't say over nine. I'd say that Denver will be better in 2022 than what they were in 2021. Now we move on to the Washington Commanders. I mentioned with Carson Wentz previously that Wentz, it's it's such a a tricky thing with Carson Wentz. It's such a tricky uh, assessment on Wentz right now. I think it's a much more complicated assessment than just saying whether or not he's good or bad, a a, a great pick or a bust. A lot of things happen to some players within their NFL career that is far out of their control. One of those things is injury, and we know very well that Carson Wentz has suffered through very, very bad injuries for any quarterback, let alone a young quarterback, young into his career. Uh, And that largely falls on the shoulders of the Philadelphia Eagles and the lack of offensive line. That falls on the shoulders of Jim Irsay and Frank Reich in terms of the lack of offensive line for Wentz there. That falls on the amount of times that Carson Wentz has been hit over the course of his career, resulting in Carson Wentz being quote-unquote gun-shy as a quarterback in the NFL. Now, Carson Wentz is somebody that I greatly respect. As I mentioned with Russell Wilson, one of the nicest guys in the NFL. You see Carson Wentz doing a ton of stuff for charity, working with kids that um, you know suffer through um, really tough times, whether it's uh, coming from a rough background or learning disabilities or anything like that. Carson Wentz is a genuine human being that I want to root for. I just... I am emotionally invested in Carson Wentz as somebody that, hey, I recognize he's a good guy, um, does all the right things off the field, squeaky clean off the field, no issues off the field whatsoever with Carson Wentz. But on the field, we have seen his skills decline, dare I say deteriorate, dare I say Carson Wentz doesn't really quite know who he is right now as a player. And... When you don't know who you are as a player, you're putting yourself in a real tough, tricky situation because Carson Wentz does not know really what his identity is as a player. He's undergoing the third restart of his career, and frankly, this is the last opportunity, I believe, for Carson Wentz to really get it right. And Ron Rivera, the head coach of the Washington Commanders, 
has to give him the opportunity to do so based on what they just traded for Carson Wentz, two third-round draft choices to land a quarterback and his contract that is in excess of $28 million per year for the next few seasons. So Washington is all in on Carson Wentz. The Washington Commanders, they got Commander Carson. And you know what? I'm going to say this too. Stop it with the quote-unquote hazing or demoralizing of these Washington Commanders uniforms. I don't mind them, and I don't mind the team name. Frankly, I I think it was probably the best name that they could have come up with, frankly. Hot take there, maybe, for some. Not so much for me. Antonio Gibson's a great back, a back that I really enjoy watching play. He's 24 years old. He's physical. He's smart. He's got great vision as well. Terry McLaurin is one of the most underrated players in the National Football League. Now he does have a quarterback that people do know, whether it's Carson Wentz or not. People do know Carson Wentz based on what he has done successfully and what he has done unsuccessfully. I'm hoping that this works out for Washington. The NFC East needs a little bit of a kick in the butt, and Washington Washington could be that team to compete with Dallas uh, for the NFC East title. Washington's defense two years ago, stupendous. So I'm rooting for Washington. To, to really get this right, Ron Rivera deserves it. Carson Wentz deserves it. Two good guys you, that you want to root for and see succeed in the National Football League. And, of course, lastly, Khalil Mack, this is still one of the best players in the National Football League, especially on the defensive side of the football. I look forward to seeing the front seven of the L.A. Chargers in action in 2022. The AFC is getting better As far as the Buffalo Bills go, you guys like to hear my take, of course, on the Buffalo Bills. The majority of the time, uh, that is what you will hear on this podcast. But a special audio edition of the show that I am going to be definitely pumping out audio content, whether it's draft content, free agency content. Buffalo Bills are rumored to be interested in uh, outside linebacker, I should say, pass rush specialist Chandler Jones, uh, brother of former UFC light heavyweight champion John Jones, and... Uh, former Rochester native. So see if we can bring him in. Should be fun. I'm Ryan Thomas. That was the Thomas Take Sports Podcast. Check this episode out on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. And of course, follow me along the way at Ryan Thomas Take on Instagram and Twitter.